Last time I showed a configuration with two 4G10 fans as part of the cooling system to build the printhead. And this time I have more ideas about the printhead with the changing mechanism involved. Hi, welcome to Solar Engineering. I'm David. Many printers use 4010 fans as their cooling system for a compact solution printhead. This setup works well in an open environment. However, when printing materials like PLA that requires cooling or when printing at faster speeds, you may need to open the enclosure door for better results. Recently, someone left a comment on the previous video that got me thinking about alternative cooling solutions. Based on the advice in the comment, I researched the Bird Air and CPAP system for bar cooling. The Bird Air system uses an air pump to push air through thin tubes and exhaust it around the nozzle with relatively high pressure airflow. CPAP is a medical device that provides continuous positive airway pressure. It can also be used as a cooling system for 3D printers to improve printing speed and airflow. Using CPAP as a part of the printhead on the XY mechanism is more suitable than using it on the swaddable tool heads. As it creates more space for the tool heads on the printer, this leads to increased tool heads that can be used on the printer. So which one I chose? I did not select any of the options. Instead, I decided to use a different strategy for my build. I installed an inlet tube connected to the CPAP hose and a 7040 blower fan at the printer's top. The blower fan will gather the hot air at the top and redirect the airflow to the nozzle tip. This setup makes the air cycle more efficient, resulting in an even temperature in the chamber and preventing cool air from outside the printer. This will prevent a relative positive pressure inside the enclosure and prevent toxic fumes from leaking. It is noted that there are fewer parts on the tool heads when the blower fan on the sides is removed. However, it is essential to leave enough space for the cooling ducts. The decision has been made to review and propose another design with a changing mechanism. The first approach is to place the changing mechanism under the stepper, similar to the 3-pin positioning of the stealth changer. I applied the concept of pins with bushings. Pins with bushings are commonly used in the mold industry for precise positioning. And with proper tolerance investigation, correct pairs can achieve outstanding precision. Pins and bushings have specific tolerance that can be combined to achieve various applications. I have a table that shows tolerance and fit in different scenarios. The changing mechanism needs to have a relative movement when swapping tool heads, so we need a fitting with a clearance fit zone, which allows a relative motion. There are four subcategories to describe the states and I recommend using the row fit or five row fit for better positioning. There are some classes for pin and bushing recommendations to achieve the proper fit. The bushing types start with a capital letter, while the pin types are all lowercase. Let's take a pair of components as an example. The H6 hole and F6 shaft, both with a diameter of 4 mm. For the X6 hole, the tolerance is between 0 and positive A, while for the F6 shaft, it ranges from minus 18 to minus 10. Combine these two components give us a relative clearance range of 10 to 26 micrometers, known as the row fit stage. Let's consider the second pair with H7 holes and G6 shafts. The tolerance for the hole is between 0 and 12, while for the shaft, it ranges from minus 12 to minus 4. These two components give us a clearance range of 4 to 24 micrometers. 
which falls under the find row fit stage. As you can see, the lower clearance value results in a tighter fit. I found economical F7 bushings 5mm long and 4mm in diameter. These bushings have an M7 tolerance that will fit with the holes designed on the 3D printing parts. I also found four different tolerances for the pins and chose the H7 pins. The bushings will range from 10 to 22, while the pins will range from minus 12 to 0. This gives me a clearance range of 10 to 34 micrometers around the row fit. After deciding on the pairs, I went back to the design process. I created three-point connections to ensure a stable fit with the tool head. But I ran into a problem when I tried to incorporate magnets to grip the tool head during printing. There wasn't enough space to place them, and I wanted to avoid placing a magnet directly underneath the stepper. To stop this, I extended the arms to place round magnets at the sides of the stepper. However, Placing the change mechanism on the lower part of the tool head takes up space, making it difficult to fit the probe compared to the original Boron printer setup. My printer is a 2.4, and a 2.4 are to use an MGN12 rail instead of two MGN9 rails. I also found that the rails under the profile takes up a lot of space in the Z direction which means that the cooling ducts need to be placed close to the print bed. You may be wondering about using the Voron tape or a similar design, but I don't think it's a good idea. More moving parts can cause more wobbling, and any residue on the nozzle can cause a leveling failure. My printer uses a bill touch and I probably don't have a place for the new design. Using a clicky probe will require a place to connect the probe without interference. This issue had led me to consider another arrangement of the tool head. I modified the design of the extruder by placing the lever on the right side while moving the stepper to the front side. This change allowed me to position the changing mechanism higher beside the extruder thereby creating a lower section that can be used for better ventilation. However, I did not place the Clicky Pro here because it would take up too much space, especially with the cooling ducts. Instead, I moved the Clicky Pro further away from the hardware. The higher connections to the x bin also created more space for the cooling duct and the Pro. The Pro is now at its lowest height and can be dug on the rear side. Everything seems fine until I added the control board to the tool head. I then realized I had to make the tool head too long in the wide direction. As a result, I need to revert to the previous design to find a solution. Previously, I faced difficulties with the lower part of the tool head trying to incorporate both a probe and cooling ducts. To stop these issues, I removed the rail beneath the profile, which created two levels. The first level is for the part cooling ducts, while the second is for the probe. Both are connected to the back of the changing mechanism, and there is a space at the rear side for the probe. As a result, there are some advantages and drawbacks for each setup. The first is the stepper at the back, which is more compact and shorter in the wide direction. However, this design has a greater distance between the bin and the nozzle, leading to a greater leverage effect during printing. Secondly, the magnets at the arms can potentially affect the accuracy of the stepper. Lastly, the third feature is the docking mechanism. When the tool head is docked, it may fall if there is no support for the stepper. To prevent this, magnets are needed at the front to keep the tool head in place. 
On the other hand, the stepper motor located at the front of the printer offers a shorter distance between the nozzle and the probe, making it more dependable options for leveling. However, this stepper motor is positioned farther on the tool head support, which could increase the changing mechanism stress while printing. I have redesigned the power cooling system and added the changing mechanism. I would love to hear your opinion on these tool heads. Please leave a comment down below to share your thoughts. If you are interested in this building project, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to share with friends with expertise in this field to gather more insight and advice. Have a great day and see you in the next episode.